This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. Welcome back to the ZMAR Podcast. Today, I have Rachel Siegel with me, and we're going to talk about accounting practices and how businesses can profit more. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Butch. Can you give our audience a little background on who Rachel is and the practice, and then um, we'll lead into profit first? Sure. So I am an accountant, but not a stereotypical accountant. I say that a lot because, you know, there's no blue suits. I'm sitting in jeans in my office. And I started out in private accounting and then went to public. So I understand my clients, the small business owners pain. And that brings a new way of looking at things. It's not just textbook and this is the way it goes. I understand the inner workings of a business. And I've been an owner of an accounting firm for a few decades. Go figure accounting is my current firm and it's six years old. That's awesome. So uh, as you stumble along the way of your ventures and experiences, how did you come up with, um, I mean, you found profit first and then you started implementing it into your practice. What what was that experience like um, starting to introduce profit first to um, your businesses, um, business clients and, and outcomes? Profit first, I had heard in a conference, Mike came out and spoke at one point. Um, mm-hmm. And I went, oh, that sounds interesting. And shelved it like pretty much everybody else does. (laughs) And then the pandemic hit and I went, there's got to be a better way for me to connect with my clients on what I keep telling them. And I came across my profit first stuff again. And I said, okay, I'm going to reread this. And I did. I went, oh, this makes way too much sense. It's easy enough for my clients to understand. So then I listened to the audio book because I'm like, okay, I read it and I want to hear it. And I went, okay, I'm going to do this because I don't recommend anything to my clients that I haven't seen or haven't done myself. Mm -hmm. It has to work for everybody. And so I dove right in, right at the target levels, which I tell everyone not to do because I'm a little bit insane. And I went, I can always back off. Let me start there. And in COVID, I did that. And after year one of doing it myself in my business, my profit, my net profit, went up 187%. And it was life changing. And there were times were changing during COVID dramatically. So you had to pivot and it still worked and it worked really well. So I said, okay, I've got to get this out to my clients and I've got to get the word out to everyone, including people that aren't my clients. Hmm. So I talk about it all the time. And It's truly life-changing for the business, which makes it life-changing for the business owner and their families and their team members. And it's just, it's an easy enough framework so that everyone can do it. So let's talk about that framework a little bit, just from a high level, um, because it's obviously a different concept than most businesses are used to, or even CPAs for that matter, right? What is this, you know, the train of thoughts that have to be shifted? And I know in the in the book itself, um, it talks about core principles. Uh, can you walk us through some of those core principles and then how some of the drastic mindset shifting that business owners have to go through in order to do this? So in terms of the book and in terms of businesses, the first thing the business owner always has to learn is that business checking account is not your personal piggy bank. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. you need to make business business and personal personal. Okay. And then what happens in the book is you get all of your income into one big bucket. And on a scheduled basis, you allocate it out to other buckets. You get a tax bucket, a profit bucket, an owner's pay bucket, and an OPEX or operating expense bucket. The idea is to run your business out of that operating expense bucket. Obviously, that's not 100% of your money coming in. So you need to watch your pennies. And it's not about doing without things. It's about making smart decisions. So the habit of doing this is created because you have less to do with it. You become innovative, you become efficient, you become less wasteful. So the example in the book that he uses that I love to talk about is the toothpaste example. 
when you get a brand new tube of toothpaste and you're putting it on your toothbrush, you don't care how much goes on there. You just gob it on and you brush your teeth. And if some falls in the sink, who cares? But as you start using that tube more and more, it becomes sparse. So then you get a little more creative. You start rolling the bottom and squeezing it a little bit more to get more out and more out until you've actually squeezed it all out and rolled it all the way up to the top and then actually pressed it down a little bit to get Mm -hmm. that last little bit. Well, Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with your business expenses. And for business owners, it's easy. If there's no money left over at the end of the month in that bucket, Something's got to do better. You either need more sales or cut expenses or change how you're doing things. And if there's excess money there, then that's money you can use for growth or more advertising or buying a building or having more employees. So it's an easy, quick way for them to do it. Also in the book, and I'm sure you use this in your practice, they talk about this instant assessment form um, and they go through and try to help assess their current situation. What is your experience like walking through some of the business owners um, through this assessment and then their reaction to it? Honestly, it's never a good experience for me (laughs) because they never realize how bad they are. Um, the people that I have done and nobody's coming in with great margins and great processes. And they get very worried, to be honest. So what we do, we go through that instant assessment and they have that shock and fear on their face. And then the next step for us is, okay, we're going to do the rollout plan. This is okay. You're not changing this and jumping all the way into your target on day one and doing what I did. I don't recommend that. So we're going to take this over a period of time. The book actually uses four periods. I like six. In my experiences, Four is really tough. Um, And as long as you get there, it's okay to go a little bit slower and not have Mm -hmm. it be as much of a problem. So when I say periods, they're usually quarters. So six quarters to get to your goals. And once you're there, you know, again, this allows for pivot and business changes. You may have to change your allocations, but within six quarters, I found most of my clients can get there. And once they're there, like I said, it's life-changing. I have a client that tried to do it on his own first and wasn't quite getting where he needed to be. So we were helping him out with the consulting end of it and adjusting his allocations and talking to him when he had issues and needed to pivot. He's now debt-free and he built a pool for cash. He has a new office space, which he built out for cash. There's no debt other than his mortgage, which he's paying down dramatically now out of his profit distributions. So he will be completely out of debt probably in two and a half years. Just to clarify for those who are listening, when you say quarters, you're talking about like calendar quarters, right? So uh, a year and a half, year and a half or so, uh, trying to move in the right direction and and change their mindset on, on a lot of things because obviously a lot of small businesses and mid-sized for that matter, they respond to urgency, right? And so they the money comes in and it's like, okay, what needs to be paid immediately? Obviously payroll. And then all of a sudden a tax bill shows up, right? And then there's nothing left uh, in certain points of the month of, okay, when's the next revenue uh, check coming in? Uh, and it makes it more difficult um, to walk through that process. So have you um, had experience taking a startup company, like has no background or experience of doing anything? And they're like, how do I make this work first? And then what are the outcomes of that when you start from scratch? It's actually really wonderful. And that's fun (laughs) because Mm -hmm. they don't know any better and they haven't made bad habits. So if they're doing it from day one, they're (laughs) successful faster. And I do that over four periods because- they can get there. So I start them off knowing since I've been doing this a long time, where Mm -hmm. they're going to hit those first pitfalls. So I adjust the percentages based on that. And then I take them over the next few quarters till they get to the targets. And they're amazed. There's nothing better than a brand new business that you get to the end of the quarter and going, here's your profit account. You can take half of that and do whatever you want. And the business owner looks at me and goes, anything? I'm like, anything you want. You can go on vacation, you can pay down debt, you can do anything you want, go buy, you know, a car, whatever you want to do. And it's just, again, life changing. I keep saying it because it makes such a difference. Once they see that first quarter, and this is with 
any business, not just the new ones. But once they see that, they're anxious to make the next change because they know it's in a good way. Now, it, when I was re- refreshing the material for our podcast and kind of reviewing some things, one of the things that came to mind was like a snowball effect, right? So the book talks about making small little changes um, to even if it's a hundred bucks, right? To, but you're building the habit, you're building the um, uh, you know the muscle, so to speak, of okay, this is how we're going to start. And then you're like, well, if I could do a hundred, I could probably do two hundred, right? And then it starts growing from there. And so these baby steps, they keep working into larger dollar amounts and become more profitable. But what happens over a period of time with your clients when you've had that success and they finally get to that point? Um, what happens on the other end, right? Now they have this habit. They're profiting more and more each year. They're maybe uh, venturing out to different spaces or or using the money privately. Uh, what have you seen like uh, from a cruise control standpoint at that point when people are um, really profiting from the strategies. So then they take their next big step. Nobody's ever stopped that we've worked with. So it's about buying another business and merging it in, opening another business, buying a building so that he can move the business into it and then have the passive income from it. Nobody's ever just gone, okay, I'm good. Let's keep it here. Now we have, okay, we're doing this. Here's our next goal. How do we get to that one? And that's where we take them to the next level, including scaling businesses, creating an overall arching company for multiple businesses. Now, what's your experience like when you work with the business that uh, uh, I'm just going to, I guess, be devil's advocate here? Like, so they, do you find business owners fighting you on this, like saying, no, this doesn't work or no, it's not the way business works or have you gotten any backlash from it? So the only backlash I get is when they think it's for tax purposes only. So profit first is not taxes. So you are putting money away to pay your taxes, but it is not the same as doing your taxes. And that confuses people. What you have in owner's pay is very different from your salary. It's not just what you're paying yourself and what you're taking out. So Having them think about profit first versus thinking about taxes are two totally different conversations. The other thing we get a lot, if it's not a profit first friendly bank, bankers don't understand why you have so many accounts. And bookkeepers, if they haven't read the book, don't understand why there are so many different accounts. So those are the bad parts about it. And you have to educate them. Once they're educated and understand the benefit, everybody's on board. Um, And I've had to do that with bankers and bookkeepers. And once they see, again, you get to that end of that quarter and everybody's light bulb goes off. Listen up. Butch wants to give you your own elite benefits playbook. And it's absolutely free. From business strategy to benefit strategy. Every step from the start through implementation, account setup, and open enrollment working through service requests and the process of renewals, a valuable look at your company, your insurance options, and how to make the process easier on you. Go now to EliteBenefits.net slash playbook and get your free Elite Benefits playbook or give Butch a call today, 708-535-3006. You find business owners, like they build this nest egg and then they have a... um natural reaction to try to use the money instead of uh, letting it sit? So that's why you have your hold accounts and your vault Mm -hmm. accounts. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason. So Mm -hmm. business owners are not used to, okay, I'm going to do this and put this here. So when you're taking your profit distributions, you're taking half, you're moving it over into an account that you don't have access to. And I, again, I always say, don't have online access, don't get a debit card and make it the worst place in the world to go to. I have a bank that's a local community bank and they have very short hours. So it's very difficult for me to get to. And without online access, it just keeps growing for me. And my other bank I use is at a financial firm and they take it automatically. For me to get that money, I actually have to call and get a hold of a guy. And that's very difficult. So Mm -hmm. my accounts just grow and they grow. And every once in a while I go, huh, I wonder what's in there. 
And yeah. I keep moving until I can hit that goal. I, but I think in the book, he actually talks about that he had, he had to drive like a huge amount of distance. I want to say it was like a couple of hours or another state mm -hmm. where uh, it would make it harder to actually get access to any of it. Yeah, the more difficult, the more you leave it. And then mm -hmm. it grows. And mm -hmm. if you're a really good saver, you may not need that. But out of all of my clients, I only have one that keeps it in the same bank. <laughs> So the <laughs> well, general population need to move it. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about uh, go figure a little bit. Like, so uh, what kind of practice is it? Is there certain niches that you guys go after or what you really work well with? So go figure accounting. We basically help businesses be successful. That's our goal. Okay. We love service-based businesses. We're super good at the big picture. Obviously, we can get into the nitty gritty and do bookkeeping and accounting. We're really good at advisory and tax planning. And our goal is to find that win-win for the client and help them grow and be successful. Because our goal is when they're successful, we're successful. Now, uh, you said service-based industries. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, some of this profit first is obviously... Uh, manifest it inside the firm and your clients, and now you're putting it into print. And so you're working on uh, putting together strategies uh, in a book um, that's supposed to come out January 1st. Uh, can you give us a little background on what, what made you decide that you're going to go ahead and write this book and uh, maybe the target that uh, you're going after with the, the material? Sure. We're writing Profit First for Optometrists, which is in formatting now and is due out January 1st. We're very, very excited. And the reason we chose that is because we do a lot of business with service-based businesses, a lot of doctors. But what we did in this book a little bit different is, is we talked a more about the business concepts that also should be looked at. And a lot of times with medical professionals and people going into these service business, they know their trade, but they don't know how to run a business. So they may make missteps that then cost them money down the road and cost them profit. So what I tried to do is intermingle those within the profit first world so they get the best of both worlds. And this sounds uh, really exciting. And uh, maybe we'll get you back in the uh, first quarter and we'll talk about the release and, and how things impact the, um, the businesses. Uh, but if any of the audience that's listening to the podcast right now wanted to learn a little bit more about Profit First and then a little bit more about Go Figure, how do they get in touch with you or how do they get access to the information? They can go right to our website, gofigureaccounting.net. And they can get information and they can even book an appointment right online with me. That's awesome. Rachel, I appreciate all your time and uh, I look forward to having you back. We'll talk about the Profit First uh, book that you're uh, publishing on January 1st. And so all my audience listeners, uh, take a look at We'll try to have the show, in the show notes a link to get access to the website. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, I look forward to having you back. Thanks again. Thanks again.